specialized diverge. And want to talk about this bike. This is different than uh, some of my product reviews that I've done in the past, where I go through all the details, what I've liked about the bike, what I um, upgraded on the bike, what I didn't like about the bike. I took this out for the very first ride today, so I'm not prepared to tell you all the things that are really well with this bike and all the things that are maybe deficient. I didn't do many upgrades to the bike. I changed the seat out um, and put a couple of water bottle cages on it, but frankly, I bought the bike as is, um, and that's not typical for me, but uh, I didn't really see anything wrong with uh, the setup. So, um, yeah, and like I said, took it outside for the very first gravel road ride this afternoon, spent two and a half hours on some of Michigan's finest gravel roads. Um, also visited a couple of trails, um, and uh, yeah, so I'm more interested in talking a little bit about the experience, why I bought this. This bike replaces a road bike that I've had in my stable. It's actually the first bike that I purchased when I started riding a few years ago, and with all of the um, gravel road races that are being introduced in Michigan, it's kind of a big, big thing that's blown up. Um, not sure if that's common for the rest of the country, but it's become a big thing here. Um, felt like it was time to replace my road bike, and if I was going to do it, I was going to replace it with a gravel road bike, um, and eventually, you know, down the line, buy another wheel set that I could have road tires on, and then keep these tires on. These are pretty wide tires. This is a, a 38 centimeter tire, um, which, you know, the road bike that I had, I think had like 21, you know, and there was an era where the, the skinnier the better, but, um, so this is definitely much more of a wide, um, gravel road, almost a, uh, mountain bike, um, tire, uh, not quite, but it's a pretty wide tire. Um, and, um, yeah, so, what I've done, what I like about this, and why I bought this, and I've been looking at a gravel road bike for the last couple of years, and was really actually going to uh, pull the trigger in 2016, and the Roubaix came out, and they had put suspension in the um, front fork, and they put it just underneath the, the, um, the stem, and it's not much suspension, but it's just enough. Um, and I thought that was pretty cool, and I heard rumors that they were going to be putting that into their gravel road bike, which is the Diverge. And so I thought, you know, I'm going to wait and see once if I can, um, and see once they put that in there. So I did, and they sure enough, they put it in. And that was a big thing. So I ride a full suspension mountain bike um, during the summer. And I know that going from full suspension mountain bike to even my fat bike in the winter uh, is a pretty stiff adjustment. Uh, it doesn't ride nearly as comfortably. And so if I was going to go with a road bike and that uh, was, was an option, that was one of the things that I wanted uh, to make sure was a part of it. There is what they call a, some people call it a gobbler uh, seat post. I don't know if that's the technical term for it, but it has a bit of uh, suspension in this uh, device right here, the way that sheet, the seat post is shaped. Um, so there's, there's a little bit of uh, forgiveness there too. You know, some of the gravel roads can get pretty rutted up and they can get washboarded out and having just a little bit of suspension to soak that up um, is great. A number of uh, races that I've been on on my Epic um, uh, mountain bike that I would race these gravel road base ra races on, I found that when the roads were really bad with potholes and with ruts, I had an advantage because at the end of the race I was not nearly as worn out, so I had a lot more energy in the last half of the race than a lot of the other uh, riders who are on cyclocross bikes. So that being said, the other thing, um, when I call this a gravel road bike, if you're not familiar, this is not a cyclocross bike. The geometry is set up much more like a road bike. It's a little bit more relaxed. Uh, gearing is a little bit different. Um, the cyclocross bike is a lot more compact and it's meant for short bursts and a shorter riding period. It's a much more aggressive setup. The gravel road bike is, is really um, mirrored after a road bike. Uh, just ruggedized a bit more for off-road. So today's ride, I took this out on uh, gravel, like I said, but ended up out on a couple of mountain bike trails. Now, the mountain bike trails that I took this on were the cross-country mountain bike trails, but they're much more technical from a twisty, turny um, uh, standpoint than they are from, uh, you know, big drop features and, um, you know, downhills. Uh, in fact, both of the trails were really uh, flat, um, but I really wanted to take it out just to kind of test it out. Um, and I had a lot of fun. There was a couple of things that I, that I learned 
Um, there's one, and the reason why I wanted to learn these things, there is one race in the, there's a new race last year called Lord of the Springs. Uh, there's a new race, it'll be coming back again this year, where it's about half mountain bike trail, half gravel road. And the thought occurred to me that maybe I could ride this and pick up additional advantage on the gravel road if I could feel like I could manage this through a trail. It's not uncommon to see a cross bike every once in a while on a mountain bike trail, uh, depending on you know the severity of the drops and, and technical features. But I really wanted to see once what this would do and how this would handle. So uh, jury might still be out on this. I don't think that I'll end up taking this on that race uh, for a couple of reasons. One, um, the brakes are are uh, a lot harder to manage um, f uh, through the trail than it might appear. Um, getting your hands up on the hoods and keeping all four fingers because frankly if you don't you get your fingers in between and underneath the brake and when you need to jam on the brakes you need to pull the brakes all the way back. Uh, and if you've got your fingers in there, there are a couple of sketchy uh, spots this afternoon where I uh, was a little bit uh, a little bit, no, a little bit nervous that I was, that I was gonna miss a turn uh, and hit a tree, but uh, managed. So there's a learning curve there. Um, I also think that while there is a bit of suspension, any trail that has anything more than a couple of roots um, in it is really gonna be beyond you know where you where you could take this. Uh, and again, both of those trails, that was really all that had roots. There weren't you know there weren't any drops or boulders or rocks or anything that you had to climb over which is the reason why I felt comfortable taking this out there as a test in the first place. But it is, um, but it was, it was fun. It was quite fun and we didn't go uh, super fast. I, uh, out of the gate, there was a couple of the riders that I was with, they did take off and, and I'll be honest, I had a hard time. There's no way I would have been able to keep up with them all the way through the trail if that's the pace they had kept. And I don't think that the pace that they were keeping was a uh, race pace. I think it was, you know, just a, 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 good, a good effort. So uh, that was one of the things that I learned um, overall from a comfort standpoint, never had any sore back, never had any sore lower, lower back or anything. Now, <clears throat> I have been riding this on my bike trainer and um, bike shop set this up uh, and I had an old uh, 29er wheel that I uh, grabbed, in fact, right here, I grabbed a, uh, I put another cassette and a, t a tire on uh, so I can just swap this out with the rear tire and quick flip it into the trainer and it's a lot quicker than taking the tire off because I did set the tires up tubeless um, uh, just because I prefer that uh, I feel like the um, um, I feel like I get fewer flats when I run that um, and then I had the shop uh, one of the machine shops in town actually uh, builds um, these little adapters and I think that uh, kinetic might actually build an adapter too but um, shop had one of these on hand so I just grabbed one of these the through axle um, you know makes a, a swap out just a little bit longer but not that big of a deal um, so yeah so overall that's that's kind of those are kind of the reasons why I ended up buying the gravel road bike and um, you know where I intend to use it um, you know I, I, I'm really hopeful hopeful that this will pull some time off from some of the gravel road races that I've been doing that have historically that I've historically used my epic with um, you know, this is a lighter bike, number one, it will be more uh, rigid, a little bit lower um, rolling uh, resistance um, and probably better geometry for a longer road ride like that, gravel road ride, like some of the races that I'm doing. Um, so I think I'll, I'll benefit there, um, but then I think throughout the summer I'll be doing mostly gravel road riding anyway. I've been moving away from doing any type of street riding um, and just because of unfortunately some accidents and, and danger on the road. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, riding this this summer, and I'll probably come back and maybe at some point give you a heads up on what I liked about it and what I think uh, I might swap out. So, till next time, this is the Diverge.